In second generation form, Kia C no longer only looks to undercut focus class family hatchbacks, it wants to tackle them on equal terms at equal prices, which means it will have to be very good indeed. With sharper looks, great quality and higher technology, the signs are promising. The rise and rise of the Korean motor industry has been one of the enduring industrial stories of the last decade. Right up there with Google, Apple and Facebook and every bit as impressive. From an embarrassing budget brand base, marks like Kia have been embarrassing mainstream makers with style and high technology at sensible prices. It was an evolution that took less than 10 years and one that all began with one car, the Seed family hatchback, launched in 2007 but now well established in the smarter and more sophisticated second generation guys that we're going to look at here. Automotive historians will look back on the original Seed as a landmark car, the first to take on the European and Japanese market leaders on their own terms, especially in the Focus and Golf dominated family hatchback sector. Built in the heart of Europe, it was targeted at the heart of the European motor industry. Hence the unusual SEED name, a combination of the French abbreviation for European Community, CE, and this car's project title, ED. It shamed the established players by matching their quality while massively undercutting their prices and offering an astonishingly long seven-year warranty. And the result was a sensation, with nearly half a million European sales. Kia's next step, though, would be even harder. After all, converting customers into a new brand is always possible if the product's right and its price is low. Making those same people pay the same money as they would for a Focus or Golf, though, might be a step too far, even for a manufacturer as ambitious as this one. To pull it off, this second generation version launched in the spring of 2012 would need to be a showcase for everything the Korean company knows about design, quality, engineering and technology. And then some. Is it? Let's find out. Now you can't fault the way that Kia has gone about this. Clearly someone in Seoul has looked very carefully at just what makes the best family hatchbacks great and gone to much trouble to try and emulate them. In the first generation C, that meant adoption of the kind of clever multi-link rear suspension system pioneered by Ford's Focus and copied by Volkswagen's Golf, something that's still not the norm in this segment. But for the second generation Seed, Kia had to go further. Think our steering system lacks feel? Then just try our new flex steer setup that enables you to choose your level of feedback. Believe our petrol engines to be ordinary, then just check out this new state-of-the-art direct injection 1.6. Or think our automatic gearboxes to be antiquated, then all you've got to do is try our new double clutch version. But you don't achieve perfection merely by ticking boxes. The seed still won't be a first choice if yours is habitually a dynamic driving style. And the reason why is tinged with irony, a lack of steering feel. Isn't that dealt with by the flex steer system? Well, it can't be in entry level models because they don't get it. Those variants that do get a button on the steering wheel, this one here, that enables you to choose between normal, comfort and sport modes. And uh, given that uh, sport is artificially heavy and comfort is really rather over light, you tend to end up most of the time just leaving it in normal mode, which rather defeats the point and gives you a setup which is just as lacking in feel as that of the first generation Seed. As I said, when trying this same setup in Hyundai's i30, I know electric power steering is difficult to get right, but I think it'd be better next time if the engineers simply developed one steering setup that's direct and incisive. Does all this matter? Probably not. Forget what the motoring mags might tell you, family hatchback buyers as a whole don't prioritise on the limit handling and never will. What's important is that this Seed uh, Focus and Golf Apart is an easy match 
for just about any other family hatchback when it comes to body control, uh, handling response and chassis balance, thanks to a structure that's 45% stiffer than before and a front end that bites nicely when you turn into sharp corners. Building in any more capability than this car now has is arguably pointless given that the range doesn't offer any of the really powerful engines that would tempt in more spirited drivers. The mainstream lineup is, after all, built uh, around just two engine sizes, 1.4 and 1.6. The smaller of the two is available with either a 98 brake horsepower uh, 1.4 litre unit uh, for petrol people or an 89 brake horsepower 1.4 litre CRDI diesel. The 1.6s, meanwhile, are um, a more sophisticated duo, equipped as they are with uh, Kia's ISG intelligent stop and go system to cut the engine when you don't need it in urban traffic. Uh, you've got a choice of a 133 brake horsepower direct injection petrol 1.6 or the 126 brake horsepower uh, 1.6 litre CRDI diesel that I'm driving here. These models are certainly as rapid as most owners will need them to be. This 1.6 litre CRDI diesel makes rest to 60 in 11 and a half seconds on the way to a top speed of 122 miles an hour. That's second and a half and 16 miles an hour quicker than its 1.4 litre uh, CRDI diesel counterpart. There's a bigger gap between the two petrol models because the uh, top 1.6 is a state-of-the-art direct injection GDI unit uh, that has 133 brake horsepower. Rest to 60 here takes 9.8 seconds. Uh, that's nearly two and a half seconds quicker than its 1.4 litre petrol alternative on the way to a top speed of 118 miles an hour. Now the 1.6 litre GDI seed was the variant that Kia chose to launch the brand's very first dual clutch automatic gearbox. You know, one of those uh, clever transmissions able to select the next gear before you've even left the last one. Now with its steering wheel mounted controls and silky smooth action, this auto transmission is certainly a step forward, but it's not gonna be uh, uh, taken up by uh, any really large numbers of buyers until it's more widely available across the seed lineup and until it's able to return a more competitive set of running cost figures. Uh, until then, the six speed manual gearbox that's standard right across the seed lineup will continue to be the default choice. Overall, a seat at the wheel of this car is a very pleasant place to spend your time. The driving position is excellent, the seat and the wheel feel good, and all-round visibility is better than in many rivals. In fact, it's better than in this car's cousin, the high-end i30, thanks to these little quarter windows in the front pillars. Though there's a little more road and wind noise than you get in, say, a Volkswagen Golf, the muted engine note means that refinement is still good enough to encourage you to undertake lengthier journeys. Uh, though on them, you might find that the ride is a little firmer than many will expect. Now, you might have heard people saying that almost all cars in this class look pretty much the same. That's because there's only so much you can do with a length that tends to be, uh, for family hatches, just under four and a half meters, into which you've got to slot five people, their gear, an engine, and a transmission, and then uh, make sure it doesn't uh, end up looking like an MPV. In nature, they call this convergent evolution, uh, the process by which uh, different species evolve separately but end up looking alike which is not to say that Kia has produced a bland car, quite the opposite. In second generation form, this uh, model has a more contemporary stance that's longer and lower than its predecessor, with the five-door hatchback version featuring a rising belt line that gives it a uh, more dynamic, aggressive wedge shape. All very nice. But a more dynamic shape is also usually a less practical one, if, as in this case, it's accompanied by a platform and a wheelbase that are essentially the same as were found in the previous generation design. So how can Kia claim this to be the most practical choice in the family hatchback segment? 
Well, I always think the acid test of a statement like that is found here on the back seat, where the lower roof height is more than compensated for by a correspondingly lower ride height. And that's enabled uh, the designers to be able to create 12 millimeters more headroom in the back here. And it gets better because there's 50 millimeters more body length, of which uh, 21 millimeters has been given to rear seat passengers. You've got 21 millimeters more space for your legs. And that enables a six footer to sit here in the back behind a uh, front seat user of uh, similar height without a problem. Now, it's true that uh, the slightly narrower body does put paid to any idea of being comfortably able to accommodate three fully sized adults for any real distance in comfort here on the back seat. But then I'm struggling to think of any uh, focus sized family hatchback that can do that anyway. Three kids will be uh, quite comfortable back here. The extra body length also provides for a boot that's 40 litres bigger than that of the Mark 1 seed at uh, 380 litres. That's 20% bigger than a Ford Focus and 10% bigger than a Volkswagen Golf. You've got uh, features like this useful luggage net to keep your iron brew from mixing with your eggs and an underfloor compartment to keep valuables away from prying eyes. And you can push forward the split folding rear seat to free up 1,318 litres of total fresh air. And at the wheel, well, it's all very neat here in the cabin, though there are rather a lot of buttons, more than I've seen on any steering wheel since I drove a Ferrari 458 Italia. What's important though is that this is a classy place to be with improvements in quality that are actual as well as just perceived. Soft touch services, high quality materials with chromed highlights, damped sun visors, lidded storage areas, subtle uh, red ambient lighting, tactile grab handles and precise panel gaps, all combining to give the cabin a solid, mature, almost premium feel. Walk around the car and you'll find shut lines that wouldn't be out of place on a Lexus. Someone's clearly spent a great deal of money on the execution of this design. Now, this seed may not be quite the bargain it once was, prices having risen by around 30% over those charged back in 2007. Having said that, it still represents an awful lot of quality for your money. Pricing sits in the uh, usual 15 to 25,000 pound bracket, common to mainstream family hatchbacks. But within this, Kia reckons to undercut obvious rivals by around 15%, a claim borne out by Priceless Study. To put that uh, kind of pricing into some uh, frame of reference for you, well, model for model, you'll be saving around 1,500 pounds over a comparable Ford Focus, but as much as two to 3,000 pounds over an equivalent Vauxhall Astro or Volkswagen Golf, depending on the variant that you're looking at. Interestingly, Kia has also chosen to undercut this Seed's design stablemate, Hyundai's i30, by as much as 500 pounds, model for model, if you're looking at diesel variants. That's the premium that you'll pay to own an i30 1.6 CRDI 110 PS over a Seed 1.6 CRDI 126 PS, despite the difference in output. If you're looking at the estate version of this car, there's the usual premium of just under a thousand pounds model for model to pay. And if you're agonizing over petrol to diesel, then the premium to go from a uh, seed petrol to an equivalent diesel variant is around um, 1200 pounds, which doesn't seem too exorbitant. Whichever 1.4 or 1.6 litre seed model you choose, five door hatch or estate, uh, petrol, or as in this case, CRDI diesel, uh, you should find it to be decently equipped because all variants get features like air conditioning that also chills the glove box to keep your drinks cool, uh, an MP3 uh, compatible CD stereo with steering wheel mounted controls, uh, a system that's also iPod and USB compatible, uh, front electric windows, power mirrors, a height adjustable driver's seat, daytime running lights and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Naturally, Kia will also sell you ritzier versions like the car I'm driving here, which has alloy wheels, cruise control, parking sensors, and the flex steer system that will automatically adjust the steering weight according to your preference. Uh, 
But of course the really uh, tempting features sit either on the options list or further up the range where Kia can now match everything competitors offer and more. So uh, there's everything from a huge glass panoramic sunroof to a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with memory. A parallel parking assist system that will automatically steer you into the tightest spaces and a Xenon adaptive lighting system with automatic levelling. There are no shortcuts taken on the safety front either. Whichever seed model you choose, there are six airbags, anti-whiplash head restraints, Isofix child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. Adding to this tally is Kia's VSM Vehicle Stability Management System, which can stabilise the car if one side of it has more traction than the other, say if there's wet leaves or standing water, maybe even ice at the side of the road. On the options list you'll find a lane departure warning system to stop dozy drivers veering out of their lanes on the highway. You might never have expected to be handing over between 15 and 20,000 pounds or more for a Korean family hatch like this one. But then you also might never have expected to be driving a five seat family hatchback of this kind, capable of over 120 miles an hour, yet able to return nearly 80 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle at the same time as putting out, what, well, under 100 grams per kilometre of CO2. Times move on and we need to adjust our perspectives accordingly. These are the sorts of figures you'll buy into if you purchase the headline making model in the range, the 126 brake horsepower, 1.6 litre CRDI diesel that I'm driving here. Thanks to a green fingered package of Eco Dynamics tweaks and an ISG intelligent stop and go system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights, this particular variant is able to return 76.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out just 97 grams per kilometre of CO2. The 133 brake horsepower 1.6 litre GDI petrol variant gets ISG2 and uses it to return 52.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 124 grams per kilometre of CO2. ISG clearly makes a huge difference. Curiously though, when this second generation seed was launched, the entry level 1.4 litre petrol and diesel variants didn't have it and their returns were, uh, as a result, not anything like as good as their pokier 1.6 litre stablemates. As for the twin clutch DCT automatic gearbox, optionally available to 1.6 litre petrol seed buyers, well, Volkswagen has proved with this technology that if it's done well, then it can reduce running cost returns that are actually superior to uh, conventional equivalent manual gearbox models. That isn't the case here though, where uh, if you opt for the DCT Auto gearbox, your uh, fuel and CO2 returns will take a 10% hit. As for that seven year, 100,000 mile warranty, which since it can be passed from owner to owner should help impressively strong residual values, well it's worth pointing out that uh, the complete car warranty element of that only lasts for five years, the extra two years uh, covering only the engine and gearbox. There's also a long 12 year bodywork and paint warranty. Servicing is required uh, once a year or every 20,000 miles for petrol and diesel models and maintenance costs can be kept down by opting for Kia's Care 3 servicing plan which offers a fixed price and inflation proof servicing program uh, for the first three or five years of ownership and that can also be passed on to subsequent owners. Uh, insurance groupings range between 7 and 15 on the 1 to 50 scale. There will still be people, of course, who will blindly buy a Focus, a Golf or some other family hatchback from a conventional mainstream brand without uh, considering its Korean alternative. But these will largely be uninformed folk yet to fully cotton on to the way that products in this segment have changed. Thanks to the success of this seed, there are fewer and fewer customers of this kind around. Of course, shortlist selection isn't the same as a sale. There are family hatch folk who want more powerful engines and more dynamic handling than this car can offer. 
but many more, I'd suggest, will enjoy this Kia's sharp looks, impressive quality, class-leading practicality and low running costs. True, the asking prices may be a little higher than you might expect from a South Korean manufacturer, but don't judge them until you've tried the product, a confident design from a very confident brand. I think you might like it.